Hi, I'm Curious Cass, and this is Curiosity Junkie. Today, we're going to be talking with Dr. Timothy Gerhardt, author of Creating an Invincible Immune System. Hi, and welcome to Curiosity Junkie. Today, we have Dr. Timothy Gerhardt with us, and he has a new book out called Creating an Invincible Immune System. So we're going to talk a little bit about his book and why he got into the healthcare industry and just kind of find out a little bit about Dr. G. So welcome, Doc. Thank you. So happy to have you. Good to be here. Yes. Thanks for taking the time to do this. I know you're You're a very busy man and we're doing this on one of your days off. So thank you. I really do appreciate it. I'd like to get into a little bit about why you do what you do because there's always a story behind it right all right so tell me a little bit about it as i remember since grade school i've always wanted to be a doctor a healer involved in healthcare. oh wow i found health and healing in the human body fascinating you know the little models with all the organs i always just really enjoyed that and i grew up with a perspective on natural healing from my parents i learned that doctor of chiropractic means doctor of cause hmm. and i always wanted to go beyond the surface symptoms band-aids to understanding what is causing that and how do we deal with issues band-aid approaches just don't work so well right and i especially love solving puzzles because most people who come to us come to us with a whole long list of problems they come to us with fatigue and chronic pain and anxiety and sleep problems and digestive problems and autoimmune and diabetes and the list goes on and on yes early dementia and whatever and so they've had concussions i'm a holistic doctor because people come to me with a whole long list of problems. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) And one of my great joys is solving the problem because there are roots, plural. And on our symptom root cause diagram that we use in our in-depth history, Mm -hmm. we have 14 spaces for roots. And usually they're all filled plus. I have to double up. And then from that, we can do testing because what gets measured gets improved. If you don't measure it, how do you know if whatever you're doing is working? Absolutely. How do you under- understand? Throwing things at the wall and hoping they stick, that doesn't work. No. Not with complex chronic health. We measure and begin to understand why somebody has a problem. And then we create a natural care process we call therapeutic lifestyle change, TLC. TLC. Mm-hmm. Tender loving care for the brain and the body in which we Um, create a lifestyle process that meets the unique genetic needs of that patient because wellness is balanced. Mm -hmm. Most of our patients come to us in tilt. So we need to understand how to add enough good stuff, remove enough bad stuff, so this remarkable natural healing process kicks in and the the body can do what it's designed to do. Our body and brain is itching to get well, but often our lifestyles have been so out of sync with our unique genetic needs that makes it impossible to stay well. Yes. And so then we we use things like therapeutic supplements and nutraceuticals and healing lasers and frequency specific microcurrent and pulse magnetic field therapy and acupuncture and a long list of tools with lifestyle and neurofeedback and brain training and these remarkable tools to add to that. So we guide people on a journey towards wellness. There's a part they do and there's a part we do. Right. I describe it as a a backpacking journey I can do with my son. I'm unable to carry my patient because I already have my own backpack on. Right. (laughs) And they have their backpack. We guide them on the journey. We can't carry them, so we work together. Right, right. What I love, too, about what you do here and how different it is than the typical healthcare industry or experience is that you really do get to that root cause. You spend a lot of time with every patient and most of them come in and they have been through almost every other medical option there is out there. They've tried everything and they come here and within a short amount of time compared to what they've been doing, within a month or two, Mm -hmm. you start to see 
dramatic results. I've seen people come in here and they, they, I don't want to say they've lost their will to live, but they've gotten so used to being in pain or so used to just being uncomfortable and unhappy. And tired. And tired. And sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yes. They just say their will to just keep moving is so low. And then within, usually within a month, I see a dramatic difference even mm. at the front desk that they're coming in and they're feeling better and they have energy and I, I just think it's amazing. And I'm seeing a little difference in myself. I'm starting on the brain yes. training and so I'm really excited to see how that's gonna work for me because as you know, I have a brain on fire. <laughs> the stress that I lived in for years and most people do, that's something I really wanna kind of talk about too okay. is that we live in a stress-filled world and most jobs have a level of stress to them. And so it's, it's amazing that your body will just kind of stay in that state after a while. And it's hard to get it to like come back down to yes. a, a calm place. So I'm excited to be going through that with you. So very, very um, happy that I work here and that you're taking good care of me. <laughs> we, we know you're a book writer, all of us here and your wife, you have several books out. What, prompts you to write a book and then specifically what what was your passion behind writing this book that is a great question <laughs> so the word doctor in latin means teacher right and that is perhaps the most important thing i do mm -hmm. and i i take that very seriously which is why we have a lending library here yes we've done wellness university for many years i teach a lot at rio salado college adult education and many classes and teaching is important. Mm -hmm. So I'm always writing material and I'm continuously learning. We call it continuous learning and improvement and I love to learn. Um, I, I think I counted one time, I read at least 50 books a year. Oh my. And so I oh. love to read <laughs> and uh, I have a personal library and a, um, as a wise person said, uh, he said, a wise person has a big library and a small TV. Oh, I love that. And, I love that. And so I find reading unusually helpful and mind expanding. Yes. So as I'm doing classes, I'm always preparing for the class. Right. I'm always learning. So I'm always assembling information. How do I communicate it? How do I get these concept across analogies, stories? And then I have this material. And then something comes along and it's like, okay, you better put that together in a book. <laughs> so the way I describe it, if I want to learn something, I teach it. Mm. If I really want to learn something, I write a book about it. Ah, now yes. I go the next level deeper into research and everything behind it. And so the first book was Seven Secrets to Wellness. It's now in its third edition. Now it's Seven Steps to Wellness. Fantastic. And that was summarized my journey in functional medicine learning to go beyond symptoms using blood work and labs and lifestyle surveys and other tools to understand what's going on. What are the basics right. of wellness from a lifestyle standpoint? And that really is summarized as the therapeutic lifestyle change. Then the next book uh, was Change Your Brain, Transform Your Life. Mm -hmm. And it, it had to do with anxiety and depression and how we do our brain scans, brain maps. We can see brainwave activity and then we can change it. And in chapter 10 of that book, I talk about functional disconnection syndrome, which is sometimes uh, what people call it autistic spectrum disorder. Right. It's just parts of the brain that haven't connected properly yet. There's nothing wrong in these brains mm -hmm. except they haven't properly connected yet the long connections and neurofeedback is one of the best tools to help, but we have many things that assist that. Third book is Why Am I Not Right Since My Concussion? And that was really interesting. That was brought on by my most recent major concussion. And within a year, it was word salad. I would be speaking and just words would come out that didn't make any sense. Oh. And, and so oh that sparked a journey and I learned through that process that I've suffered over, I stopped counting after 14 concussions. And that's something I think is really interesting yes. to, to talk about because 
we don't realize what a concussion is. What I was taught through my education when I started uh, many years ago and most of my medical colleagues is long obsolete. 90% of all concussions involve no loss of consciousness. Mm. You can land on your tailbone hard and jolt your brain have a concussion. Yeah. You can have an IED blast for a soldier hitting his vest from 100 yards away, creating a con compressive force, hydraulic up to the brain, concussion. Right. Um, you can have a little fender bender that jolts your brain, creating yeah, a big... Right. <laughs> or being hit from behind. Uh, most of our car accidents create concussion even if we don't realize it. And then the results can show up many, many years later. Right. And so um, what we've learned from that is concussions create the same changes in the brain as dementia very quickly. And the concussion can heal or not, mm. which I see often. Yes. And the latency, the time from concussion to the symptoms can be up to 20 years. Oh. Excuse me, 30 years, three decades. And I have a documented case of 40 years. Wow. So it's a, the brain will compensate and do its magic and we think, well, I didn't get hurt. But then it shows up later, I'm irritable, I'm edgy, I don't sleep well. My stress tolerance is down, I'm more anxious, I'm more grumpy and <laughs> edgy. And my yes. memory doesn't work well, I can't learn. Yes. My ability to focus. And you just chalk it up to like random things in your head. You don't yes. connect that that was the whiplash. Years ago. Yes. And then it's, unfortunately it's multiple. Yeah. Uh, I was beamed as a, uh, I was a, a catcher on our little sandlot field when I was growing up. And I remember this, I didn't remember when my brain was in trouble, but as my brain got healthier, I started remembering. I got drilled by a fastball right in the forehead. Oh. Yeah, that, that did it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, you know, another time, uh, water skiing, uh, uh, hitting a, shallow water and slalom skating a sandbar oh. and and I did this head over heels thing and I just sat there dazed oh, yeah. and somebody in the boat laughed at me and they said it looked like I was sitting on water because I'm sitting in about skate. three inches of water <laughs> with this submerged sandbar but oh, I was I just bounced my brain around injuring it right and these things show up and create trouble later right and then the fourth book is uh, regarding dementia, and I was my mother's journey with Alzheimer's has been was part of that, and other patients. And so the fourth one is living free of dementia, right. solving the puzzle to prevent and reverse cognitive decline or ability to think clearly. Right. For peak brain performance. Right. And something on that that <clears throat> you've seen in your practice yes. is. It does slow it down dramatically. Actually, the patient that uh, was just in uh, for evaluation the day before yesterday, four years ago, she was diagnosed with uh, Parkinson's, mm -hmm. vascular dementia, and Alzheimer's. Wow. Mixed dementia, where you have multiple types, is the most common, and or one of the more common. And in her case, what's happened is that things have reversed. And we started almost age 70, and we were right on the cusp, and we're four years down the road. Right. Her brain is healthier now than any time that she's aware in her adult life. And we have the objective evidence that things have gone from all sorts of dysfunction back to high level normal, yes. peak performance. Her uh, Parkinson's doctor says she no longer has the symptoms of Parkinson's. Uh, so not only wow. can we slow progression, sometimes stop progression, but often the brain can heal. Yeah. We don't treat dementia, we treat the person. Mm -hmm. When you solve the, pu the puzzle, this remarkable, even miraculous natural healing process kicks in. Because yeah. wellness is balanced, people come in like this. We add enough good stuff, remove enough bad stuff, and healing takes over. We don't fix people. We just kind of help the process along, remove what's getting in the way, add good stuff, remove bad stuff, and wow. Yeah. Watch what happens, and that's immensely satisfying. 
Yes. I wish we helped everyone with dementia. There's, the good news is over 90% of the people that we work with, if they do the work of lifestyle change and we do our work, we see uh, subjective how they feel, objective testing, major improvements. Right. Uh, it is rare that we strike out. Yes. Uh, it, it's happened, but most, but it takes work. Yes. It takes some time. It does, and it, I think the key to this is it takes participation from you and the clinic and yes. the therapies, but it also takes participation and a willingness to heal and a mindset that they will heal because they have to do all the stuff on their side, the eating right, the staying away from certain foods, the putting in the supplements. Going to bed at a decent time. Yes. Turning that blasted TV and yes. cell phone and Technology. computers off. It's a bad thing. An hour before bed. Yes. So their brain can unwind. We're not stimulating with those frequencies. Right. Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're right. It takes, and we don't need perfect progress, not perfection. Right. Up on the wall of our clinic, we have giving the gift of hope and healing yes. to the, to those ready for wellness. Yes. How do and we I, know somebody's ready? Well, readiness means opening to learn and to change. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody's, you know, we call it closed X. I've eaten this way for 60 years <laughs> and I ain't going to change. <laughs> and I do whatever I do. I do my... Uh, Captain Crunch and milk for breakfast. <laughs> right. I do Wendy's for lunch. And then I used I do, to do Oreos. I don't uh, anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. <laughs> I do. McDonald's drive through for dinner with Oreos for dessert. <laughs> and then a bowl of ice cream every night before bed. Oh, my goodness. And I got this big belly. And I like it because now I have a place a to put my plate. <laughs> a shelf. And I ain't going to change. And I don't want to learn nothing different. I'm sorry, we're, we're, you're not ready for us to help you yet. Right, right. It's a journey. So we help people step by step. We have lifestyle coaches, yes. wellness mentors, we call them, that work with people step by step to make these little lifestyle changes that really add up over time. Mm -hmm. Progress, not perfection. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now the most good. recent book. Yes. So uh, Karen, uh, Karen Marshall, one of our staff members, mm -hmm. it has her master's in social work. And, the, and she ran a mental health clinic uh, in Indiana. She was CEO, and then she merged it with a Goodwill, first time that had been done, to use the profits from the Goodwill to fund the mental health clinic oh, for wow. people who needed mental health services but couldn't afford them. I did not know that about and Karen. And very uh, innovative. So she's been with us, and she helps us with many of our marketing and, any, oh, yes. and many things, and, and we really appreciate it. She's with me when I'm teaching many of these classes, mm -hmm. helping people with questions afterwards and, and resources. And Karen said, Dr. J, you need to put this together in your next book. As a team, we went back and forth. Initially, we talked about creating a bulletproof immune system. Yes, that's right. And yes. Dave Asprey has done a great job at bulletproof, but not everybody's into bullets. Right. So we came on Invincible. And what I've appreciated most about this book, empowering you to stay well in challenging times. Yes. Is we have given way too much power to a virus. A virus has zero chance against an even reasonably competent immune system. Right. Our immune system will destroy a virus in a blink without even breaking out of sweat. Right. It's easy. And our immune system is so remarkable. There's, uh, I describe it as three major uh, step one, step two, step three. Step one is our mucosal membrane skin, our barriers. Mm -hmm. And when they're healthy, it's like a 12 foot castle wall, 12 feet thick of rock. Uh, right. And the invaders come up and they just bounce off it. <laughs> they don't get in, there's no immune response beyond it because they just bounce off the wall. That is why when the flu comes through or COVID or anything else, there's a, a percent of the population that's exposed and never gets sick at all. Right. Uh, that is somebody that has what we call uh, an invincible immune system. Yes. One of the chapters I enjoyed the most, well, uh, in the book, the in, in the introduction I talk about Louis Pasteur, the fa father of microbiology and the germ theory, his close friend, 
and who ran his laboratory was Eli Menshnikov, brilliant Russian who earned his own Nobel Prize. And they had an ongoing for years controversy, kind of a friendly <laughs> argument. Which is more important, the terrain, means immune system, okay. uh, or the germ? Mm. And on his deathbed, Louis Pasteur is reported to have said to his friend Eli Menshikov, Eli, you were right. It's the terrain. The terrain is everything, the germ is nothing. Huh. I wouldn't put it quite that far. I would say the terrain, the immune system, is this big, mm -hmm. and the germ is that big. Does that mean I would drink a whole liter of coronavirus <laughs> just to test my immune system? Right. Of course not. That'd be crazy, right? <laughs> uh, but our germ exposure matters a little bit. Mm -hmm. Our immune system strength competency, being invincible, matters a bunch. In my mind, silliness to focus only on the virus right. and miss the immune system. The, the, the other chapter that I found so interesting that I enjoyed is chapter three is, are germs bad? Mm, that's a great one because people get caught up in this, you know, uh, germophobia stuff and they don't want to, they come home and they're washing their hands seven times a day and they're constantly putting the whatever sanitizer all over their hands. One so of our patients so obsessed, anxiety driven, yes. cracked and bleeding skin on her hands. Yes. A young mother, Yes. Uh, in her 30s. It was just, I saw it, it was terrible. Yes, it was terrible. Um, and I can tell you that washing your hands till they bleed, bleaching everything, yes. worrying like crazy, that doesn't work. The reason is, if germs are bad, we have a big problem <laughs> because we are mostly germs. I know, I love that when you first kind of told me that, like you're covered in them, and I was like... No, inside us. Inside and us too, right? <laughs> We're a hundred trillion germs covered right. in human skin. That's what the microbiology research tells us. Right. A hundred a trillion <laughs> germs covered in hum human skin. Right. Our human cells, about 70 trillion, are outnumbered. Uh, a couple years ago, as we were Crazy. research coming out, we thought it was 10 to 1. 10 germs to 1. And now we realize the ratio is uh, just over one to one. But oh. now, even more important, our DNA, mm -hmm. only less than a percent of DNA is human. What? Most of our DNA is in our microbiome. Oh, so okay, the yes. best analogy oh, wow. is uh, on my laptop, I have an external hard drive. And you can have a hard drive that's really big because I have a solid state hard drive that's smaller. Oh, right. Our cells cannot contain all the DNA we need to really do everything we want and still be efficient. Mm. So the way it's worked is 99% of all our DNA is stored in the bacteria of our microbiome, mostly in our gut. Uh, so it's our external hard drive. So we right. want healthy bacteria yes. because most of them are our friend. Yes. Most germs are people. not our enemy. <laughs> and if you think I'm going to kill all germs, it's been described as to do that, you would need a thermonuclear device, a <laughs> nuclear weapon, or a crematorium works also. Oh, right, right. You're Neither like are like consistent right. with wellness or health. <laughs> so instead of the idea of another analogy is, think of this microbiome as a rainforest. Mm or a garden on the inside, or even a lawn. Healthy lawn, uh, healthy turf chokes out weeds or keeps them in suppressed. Right. So if you go in and round up the entire lawn, mm. kill everything, weeds and turf, what grows back first? Weeds. Weeds, yes. With a rainforest, if you uh, strip cut the rainforest or burn it, right. and, and now the weeds come back. Right. Other, and I've been in rainforests in Colombia and Indonesia, and in a rainforest there are no weed problems. The thousands, tens of thousands of different plant species keep everything in perfect balance. Right. There's yes. never a weed problem, it's just kept in balance. Yeah. So wellness is balance. It's not killing stuff, it's bringing it that. into balance. It's balance. Balance it's is balance. a better word. Yes, I love that. So another factor that came out is with the COVID thing, and COVID means coronavirus, and by the way, we've had a bunch of them because that's the common cold. 
Oh, right. Uh, a okay. common cold is typically a coronavirus. Okay. Uh, so COVID means coronavirus. COVO, ID is infectious disease. Mm. COVID is coronavirus infectious disease number 19. So obviously it's not our first one. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and then what causes it is SARS, se severe acute respiratory infection, SARS-CoV-2. Mm. SARS-CoV-1, I lived through in 2003. Right. That was our first severe acute respiratory uh, syndrome. And by the way, the death rate was way higher. That was uh, about 10 times higher than it, the death rate from this particular virus uh, CDC confirmed it recently is just 0 0.26 percent which is interesting because mm -hmm. from all the hype on the news and everything people think it's 20 they focus or 30 just on the really bad stuff right and it seems like out the of flu whack. is 0.1 percent uh, so it's really in the category it's like a strong flu right. 0.1 percent flu 0.26 percent now, if it's you who dies or a loved one, I mean, it's of course sad. No yes, big deal. absolutely. What we, however, what we're learning is most people aren't dying from the virus. That's rare. Yes. They're dying from what's called uh, a cytokine storm. Mm. And cytokines are messengers for inflammation. And so I use in the book, uh, one of the graphics is inflammation, like this brain on fire mm -hmm. or body on fire is our biggest cause. And then I use a graphic of somebody shooting a high-powered assault rifle. What happens is our immune system, we said phase one is the wall, mm -hmm. phase two is the SWAT team. Ah, right. And they have awesome machine gun assault rifles that fire free radical bullets. A virus doesn't stand a chance. It is vaporized, <laughs> uh, disintegrates. Um, the pro what people are dying from is an immune system that is so out of whack, out of balance, mm -hmm. that it doesn't activate when it should early. Mm -hmm. And now you have all sorts of enemy soldiers in the castle. Right. Then it releases, it starts firing the machine gun bullets, eradicates, but the trigger gets stuck on, it keeps going. Oh. Now, if this is in the lung, which is severe acute respiratory right. syndrome Absolutely. is in the lung, now it destroys part of the lung the alveoli, that dumps all this inflammatory debris in the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure plummets, organs fail and somebody dies from called a cytokine, a super inflammation storm oh, okay. triggered by a virus. The problem is not the trigger, it's everything that was going on ahead of time. Right. So the so number one happened. risk factor for getting so sick with COVID, you have to be in the hospital, mm -hmm. no surprise is obesity right right because the fat especially around the midsection organs mm -hmm. is a massive inflammation factory right doctors around the country are talking about this is not people dying from COVID they're dying from chronic diseases yes. they're obese they have type 2 diabetes they have heart disease they have hypertension they have anxiety they have a list of things Right. And then a virus, it could be a flu virus, COVID, and COVID's a good trigger. Yes. It triggers in this whole process, cytokine mm -hmm. storm, and sadly, sometimes they die. We can do many things right. to deal with this, but blaming the virus and fearing the virus isn't one of them. Fear weakens the immune system. At the same time, it increases inflammation. Does that sound healthy? No, <laughs> no, because so, you're kicking all those stress levels up right. and anxiety. It's not, not healthy. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how do you create an invincible immune system? Solving what? the puzzle. We like things simple, one size fits all. <laughs> Regarding right. health issues with chronic means things we've had over 90 days, mm -hmm. there isn't a one size fits all and there's not a magic bullet. Mm -hmm. So many of people come to us with, we call them under lean, mm -hmm. under lean overweight. Doc, I want to lose weight. Uh, so, okay, if you cut off your leg, you lose weight. Is that healthy? <laughs> no. Well, right. how do you want to lose weight? <laughs> they've been doing that for years with right. fat diets where mm. they've been losing muscle and organ mass, right. damaging their metabolism. They've been, in effect, cutting off part of the engine uh, right. and hurting themselves. And they keep losing lean body mass, muscle, organ tissue, and gaining fat. So they keep getting um, 
fatter even though their weight may stay the same. They're harming their metabolism. We have to solve the puzzle. Why? It may be they're not sleeping. Mm -hmm. Another one is if somebody's inflamed, yes. inflammation creates insulin resistance. Now you just look at food you put on weight. Right, right. Insulin resistance means when you eat calories, instead of converting them to energy, you're converting them to fat and free radicals that create inflammation. Oh wow! So if you're already inflamed, yes, it's just it just create it just gets worse. And most Americans are right. Our standard American lifestyle and our yes. standard American diet, called the SAD diet, the acronym. Yeah. What are we eating? Processed that food? That's kind of sad. Like, when yes. you think about it, the acronym for the standard American diet is SAD. Ugh. Yes. <laughs> We're eating in a way that feeds inflammation. In the classes I, I teach at Rio Salado, one of the students, gentlemen, said, okay, of all the stuff you talk about, if you could do one thing that would make the most difference, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Not being Winston Churchill, I didn't have the immediate answer. <laughs> Two weeks later, the next class, because I pondered, right. I yeah, said, I want it to eat, be the right answer. eat only unprocessed foods. Mm, yes. The less our food has been processed, doctor, the less we need a doctor. Yes. That is a profound concept. You're going to do one thing, do that. Yes. Second, for the immune system, make sure your vitamin D is optimal. You hear that? Vitamin D. Now, D is in dog, Delta. Yes. I didn't say take vitamin D. Right. Remember? If it isn't tested, who knows? Right, you don't know where it is. Some people take it and it doesn't work at all. Some people take it, they're still way too low. A few people take it and it's too high. Wellness is balanced. Yes. Get a blood test. And that blood test for a clinic is like 79 bucks, so it's affordable. Right. And if their vitamin D is really low, they often have a vitamin D receptor defect. Mm. Vitamin D is the key and the cell membrane is a lock. So I may have a car key, but if it doesn't fit the lock or the lock is broken, that doesn't, yeah, doesn't work at all. Right. <laughs> so often we run into that. Mm -hmm. Then we have to add things like vitamin K2, vitamin A, and then recheck to make sure it's working and tweak it till we get it to work. Right. So um, it isn't taking vitamin D, it's getting a test. If you're low, add in what you think, retest and get it optimized. Everybody's different. One size doesn't fit all. I know, yes. I have size 11 shoes. They don't fit everybody. I have right. a nephew with size 16 feet. That would not work. <laughs> so, right. Um, right. And I, I do think that's really important because I know there has been some talk about vitamin D and A and C and, you know, you just boost your immune system with that to kind of battle this COVID, but it's a little deeper than that. And it again goes back to the balance yes. and testing and knowing where your levels are and where all that yes. sits. Because if you don't, like you said, you're just throwing stuff at the wall and hoping Hope something sticks. sticks and you're taking a big risk. And there's no need to battle COVID. Yeah. The, the issue is COVID is a secondary side issue. We have a, an American population with a massive problem mm. with insulin resistance, I think uh, sometimes called type three diabetes and chronic diseases. When I started practice, it was called maturity onset diabetes. Mm. The peak incidence was senior citizens. Ah, right. Guess what the peak incidence age is now? It's preteens. Seriously? Age eight kids with full-blown type two lifestyle induced type two diabetes. Wow. That is just... Ridiculous. Oh, it is sad, it's ridiculous. It's impossible to stay healthy though. We don't need to battle COVID. What we have to do is we have to deal with our really messed up lifestyles yes. that are messing up our immune system. Right. Create a reasonably healthy immune system and you don't have to battle any virus. Your immune system takes care of it yes. easily. Vitamin D, optimize. We like the level on a blood test between 60 and 80. Okay. Some people occasionally, rarely, can do that with as little as 5,000 of vitamin D, international mm -hmm. units. Always take it with K2. Mm -hmm. It's not safe to take vitamin D alone can calcify arteries and joints okay, good and, to know. and heart valves. Most people, around 10,000 is a good place to start. On blood testing, almost never is that too much. Mm -hmm. But many times it's not enough for, for, for people. For some, right. And so I have people that need 20,000 a day, some 30,000, everybody different. If you're gonna get a pair of shoes, you don't just say, give me a pair. 
You ask to <laughs> fit my feet for the right size. Same with vitamin D. Love it. The next one is zinc, which is a mineral. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's inside the cell, it almost stops viral multiplication. Mm -hmm. And we've heard of hydroxychloroquine and yes. and it's been in the news and all of that. It works as an ionophore. What that means is it pushes zinc into the cell. The problem is taking zinc, it's not what we take, it's what we absorb. Yes. And what we circulate and bioavailable, we can get into the cell, mm -hmm. transport. So an ionophore transports, pushes zinc into the cell. Hydroxychloroquine does that. Unfortunately, it has side effects. It's a drug, a medication, and there's a lot of politics around that. We also have quercetin in the natural uh, realm, and it's in the bioflavonoid family. Mm -hmm. So we use quercetin concentrates with zinc mm -hmm. as an ionophore to push it in. It's awesome. Yes. It also works awesome for men with benign prostatic hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and a lot of guys over 40 have that. So right. uh, men need more zinc to keep their prostate happy. Does this work? Yeah. So all I can tell you of all the patients we treat in Renovair, uh, we have had not one of our active patients get sick, with the exception of somebody I hadn't seen in about six months. Massive stress, single mother, not taking care of herself, eating junk, uh, not taking her supplements, not getting her vitamin D tested, all of that, she got sick. She did not have to go to the hospital because we got it, started a vitamin D immune boost and now we're helping her deal with her anxiety issues and kind of help her get well because she got through COVID but because of her other chronic diseases, she was very unwell mm -hmm. and she's ready to start getting well. So. Right. Solving and, the problem. And that's a, I do think that's a big piece of it is the chronic disease fuels the fire. Yes. And then also really knowing that supplements have to be measured and monitored and they don't, just because you're taking D or A or C or B doesn't mean your body is absorbing it. Or it's working to fit your unique needs. Because exactly. we're different. Right. Another so, analogy I like Definitely have is it measured. I drive uh, an old diesel car that I have a lot of um, love for. Fondness for. <laughs> My son the son says in an irrational way, but <laughs> so it's a diesel. So what would happen if I put the best gasoline in it? Mm. Wrong fuel. Right. Some people are doing that with their eating their lifestyle. We, if you have a gas car, don't put in diesel. Right. Or vice versa. We need to create a lifestyle eating supplements how we sleep, stress. Some people need to go to bed earlier, mm -hmm. some people later. Uh, there's even different biorhythms. Yes. We need to create a lifestyle that fits our needs. One of the other chapters I enjoyed the most in learning and also the most challenging for me to write was chapter 12 on EMF. Electro EMF is electromagnetic frequency. Uh, another term is electro pollution. Mm. And I have not heard that. What's happened is we have a million times more energy in the not light that we can see in the invisible realm, mm -hmm. like microwaves, okay. cell phone, uh, Wi Fi, all of 5G, 4G, 3G, yes. all of these bombarding us than our ancestors did. And what's interesting, and I go in the introduction, is uh, and history teaches us that every time we've added a new level of this electro pollution, we've had an epidemic. Which is fascinating. If somebody's really into research and, and love that you like the facts, look at that. Because when you brought that up one day, I was like, what? I documented in the introduction. Yes. Read that chapter 12. Yes. Well, that's the introduction. <laughs> oh, yeah. On the, and so what happens is, uh, so with COVID, uh, the outbreak was Wuhan, China. That was the first, first major city to roll out 5G. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe 30,000 different transmitters. And 5G is about 100 times stronger in electro pollution mm -hmm. than 4G. And uh, the, the other next, the major city in our country that rolled it out first was New York City. Yes. Uh, a major rollout. And so is it a coincidence? Is it the only issue? No. Remember a puzzle. Right. So it isn't just electro pollution EMF. Right. It's that 
and diabetes and eating junk food and obesity and too much stress and not enough sleep and the list. Yes. And where exercise is pushing the remote on the TV so I can binge watch. <laughs> right. Uh, we need all of those pieces, again, not perfect, but reasonably well. Yes. Progress, not perfection. With EMF, the thing that was the biggest eye-opener for me is I am trained in, in radiation physics and had to go through that and certified uh, because I've had an x-ray unit in a previous clinic. Mm -hmm. It's a chiropractic physician doing x-rays and reading them. Um, what we learned is x-rays are high energy EMF mm -hmm. called ionizing radiation. It can knock loose an electron and damage DNA and create all cancer, even death. What I learned through the updated research now, researching for the book, is that high energy x-rays, there's a direct pathway where it knocks those electrons loose in DNA, mm. but there's an indirect pathway also, and it creates free radicals and create inflammation. Oh, Guess yes. which creates most damage in, from x-rays, the indirect pathway. Oh, of course. <laughs> now, with EMF, our cell phones holding up to ears frightens yes, me. I, I saw a young mother stick her phone in her top right over her breast. Yes. It made me cringe. There's I know so many young girls that do that and they just slide it in idea. there and I'm like, oh, It is don't linked do it. with breast cancer right where the phone was. Yes. We have cases of that showing up now. Right. What we know is that the EMF from our phones and devices, electro pollution, also uses the same an indirect pathway like x-ray radiation. Mm. The difference is the indirect pathway uh, from x-rays creates free radicals to hang around for a short period of time. With the cell phone, it creates free radicals to hang around a million times longer. Wow. In some ways, our cell phones are far more dangerous than x-rays because x-rays have very limited exposure we're exposed 24-7. Yes. So one thing we teach is with the Wi-Fi router in the house, yes. get a $5 switch at the hardware store, like you use for Christmas lights, mm -hmm. that turns the darn thing off at night. Yes. Goes off at 10, comes on again at whatever time in the morning, 6, 7. Right. Because it interferes with sleep. You're being bombarded with all of this. Do not sleep with your cell phone even in the same room. Yeah, especially kids. That's something that yes. we've got some a couple of younger patients and that was one of the things that the parents did was remove the phone from the bedroom and the child at night so they're not sleeping with it under their pillow and we we've seen the mother good was response. in sharing her story on Wednesday in tears and how much mm -hmm. her son has improved. Yes. We combine that with the lifestyle things, some supplements, neurofeedback. Yes. There's a lot to it, but back. it's just amazing. It, kids, young kids even respond. today are on those devices, oh. iPads. I mean, they start really young on like an iPad. And, and so it's just, it's important to know that yes. you do have to limit that and take it away at least an hour before bed and keep it out of the room, the bedroom, definitely not under the pillow. Super important. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the young mother with the hand washing until her hands would bleed, her little daughter would come in when she was in. Yeah. And she was so cute and she was so quiet because she had an iPad. She was always on. Yes. It was like she was addicted and she was quiet as a mouse. Mm -hmm. Well, I explained to the mother and actually shared that chapter 12 in EMF with her. And as soon as she realized it, the, the iPad was gone. Yes. And so what we have here is we have adult to child level coloring books, mm -hmm. coloring pencils. Yes. Really gar good for the right hemisphere of the brain. And as that happened, this little girl was talking and interacting as, wow, she's yes. got a personality. Yeah. It was awesome. Because before she, she literally, she would just, she would barely even, she'd look up at you like, mm, don't talk to me. Don't look at me. I'm scared. And she didn't have it so she started coloring and then she would come and show us and then she started talking it was amazing yes. yes yes so with emf there are so many practical steps and i think i stopped at about 20 and i prioritized uh the first one is keep your cell phone as far from your body as possible yes i never hold it to my ear now i'm sensitive so i used to get a headache 
immediately when I did that. Right. And so I keep it away on speakerphone, or there's blue tube headsets, and I have a resource guide with all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the Wi-Fi turning mm -hmm. off at night. Yes. It's when you double distance from your iPhone or source of these electropollution, it decreases the intensity tenfold. Mm. It's logarithmic. So if you double distance, you decrease your exposure tenfold, ten times. Um, don't use your cell phone in your car. The, mm. It can be up to a thousand times higher because it takes more energy to get those towers as you're moving oh. and through the car. So you'll notice your phone gets hot and your battery goes down. Right. Well, you're getting blasted. When you're Bluetoothing through your car. Yeah, you're getting blasted with these EMF electromagnetic field electropollution. Wow. Okay. And so I do a whole bunch of practical steps. I, it's always about, I, I think, a lot of things we do are the quick fix. Yes. We want the easy button. We want to make life easier. And so we like the Bluetooth because... Everything's not connected. You're mobile, eating, fast food. Like there's right. just so many different things that we do because it's convenient. And sometimes yes. you have to inconvenience yourself a little bit for a healthier life and good health later down the road because you're going to pay for it eventually if you don't start yes. paying attention. That's a good way to put it. I also think about, about it. I'm investing in my wellness. Yes. Now, people say, well, it takes time. It takes effort. What I've learned when I invest in my wellness, I have energy, mm -hmm. I have vitality, I have stamina. So I get so much more done. I remember being so tired, it was just a chore to do the basics. Yes, And I've been there. And when we invest in our wellness, we get the gift of energy and a clear mind and I can see solutions and not spinning my wheels. Otherwise, as we get older, we spend our time just going to doctor visits, <laughs> yeah. uh, taking a long list of medications that uh, may help temporarily, kind of, but it just gets worse over time. Right. And I was going to say, it's a healthy energy. It's not an anxiety or a Hyper. elevated, yeah, it's not that kind it's of energy. It's not a Red Bull It's a good, head. healthy yeah. energy. Peaceful energy. Yes. yes. I love that. All right. Well, thank you again for taking the time. And if you are interested in picking up creating an invincible immune system, let me spit that out, um, you can reach out to the website. Our website is brainwellnessaz.com is even easier. Right. Brainwellnessaz, as in Arizona, az.com. Yeah. Or call us at 623-776-0206. We can send you a copy. Yes, absolutely. Well, thanks for tuning in, joining, listening, watching, and stay safe, my friends, and stay curious.